I think it's been terribly sad these last three years that you wouldn't have known he was in the races. Would you? Well, I mean, you would if you were studying mm. a bit further back and you were concentrating on him. But in terms of results, you know, he's he's obviously you know not had a prayer. Well, before uh, we get on to the future and the potential, mm. just give me an idea of how much what you think about Fernando and how much he means to you in terms of watching a Grand Prix these days? Well, I, I, I think Fernando is the, is the greatest driver of this century. Um, and I've thought that for a, you know, a dozen years and more. It, it really registered with me once when I was talking to Massa. Um, and I asked him a question which I didn't think he would answer. But I said, you know, you were teammates to both. Michael or Fernando, who is better? And he just said, oh, Fernando. Mm. And that really registered with me. So you must have been incensed when he left Ferrari or Ferrari left him, well, whichever, whichever way you want to look well, at I it. Well, I was, but I mean, on the other hand, after the year, they'd, if you think how bad Ferrari were in 2014, I mean, they mm. were embarrassing. Mm. Um, and Marco Mattiacci was the car salesman, was yeah. running the team. Um, <laughs> and that was what Fernando fundamentally couldn't cope with him. Mm. A combination of that and a, a, a pretty terrible car. Um, I think it was a lot of things coming together at one time. And uh, But then in fairness to McLaren, nobody else was offering him a drive at that point, astonishingly. No, Red Bull didn't pick no, up the no, phone to him. Well, what I, do you think about that? Well, I, I, don't, really, I don't really get it. Um, it's Because uh, a, a Vettel-Fernando swap deal would have been perfect for Formula One. Well, yeah, you'd have thought so. Mm. I mean, but that's not Red Bull's policy, is it? They don't take mm. people from outside. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, in my column this week in, in Autosport, I, I mentioned this a friend of mine a, a, who was a retired driver has this theory that um, Dieter Zetcher and Sergio Marchionne at some point shook hands on a deal. If you don't sign him and we don't, none yeah. of us will have to worry about him. Yeah. And if yeah. we keep our engines from going to any other team we might drive for, same applies. Do you think... It's the same Fernando that we'll see. Let's assume that the McLaren Renault is a very quick car. How good is Fernando 2018 going to be? Well, I, I mean, I don't know about you. I think he's has been as, as good this year as you know as, as ever I've I seen. I would agree. Yeah. Um, so I don't have any real concerns, uh, you know, on that score. I mean, the fact is, he isn't going to have the horsepower that that uh, Lewis and, uh, and and Seb are going to have, and that's pretty much. It's going to be an interesting fight within the Renault family, though, right? You're going to have Hulkenberg, uh, Science. You're going to have Ricardo Verstappen yeah, yeah, and yeah. Van and Dorn, Alonso. Yeah. How do you think that's going to go? Well, they, I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, they are apparently they they will have exactly the engines the Renault Formula One team will have. So it's not as though they're going to be a year behind or anything. So no. It, I mean, it, as I say, it isn't going to be like a Mercedes, but it is going to be infinitely better than you know than what they've had. 